Hey y'all, it's Whitey Coyote here. In the Chicagoland area, we have a lot of things that we might call invasive species. So today, I'm going around and asking some of our most recognizable plants if they would consider themselves invasive species. Starting with Mr. Ramnus Cathartica here. Ramnus Cathartica, do you consider yourself invasive? How do you feel about that? Wow. You hearing this guy? Deluded, man, deluded. Sorry, I should be a little more neutral. How about you, little guy? You little fella? Do you, do you, do you consider yourself invasive? Uh-huh. No, I hear you, I hear you. Well, that was very insightful, sir. Th thank you, thank you for your time. All right, how about this fella right here? Excuse me, Soledago. Would you consider yourself an invasive species? Okay, all right, stop touching the mic. Dude, stop touching the mic. Stop touching the mic. Why are you touching the mic so- So we hear all the time of this concept of invasive species. And we might hear anyone from our neighbors to TV talking heads referring to invasive species in a negative light. When policymakers or landowners or any other kind of land manager responds to an invasive species, they usually respond with eradication. On the other hand, you might encounter problems such as rabbits eating your vegetables or ants getting into your cupboards. I've had many folks ask me if I can eradicate these invasive species. And it is my duty to inform them that those are not invasive species. But you see that bush out back with those smooth black berries on it? I can remove that for you. Can I take care of that for you, please? Invasiveness is, of course, a complex and controversial topic with no broadly agreed upon definition. Different schools of ecology even might define invasiveness differently according to different purposes. For example, if you're trying to study like the nutrient exchange between restoration ecology, uh, invasive is highly contextual. In fact, it's almost a requirement to be determined invasive that that species be notedly not invasive in some other part of the world, or even just in some other part of an ecosystem. But why am I telling you all of this before I've even defined what invasive is? Well, because it's most important to understand that invasive means different things in different situations. All of that being said, there are more than a few ways to determine if something is invasive, and most of those methods do agree upon this, that an invasive species is a species which, when displaced, from the context in which it originally evolved negatively affects an ecosystem's biodiversity to the benefit of the invasive species. If that sounds really broad, it is. So let's try to narrow it down a little bit. First, let's establish four terms here. You've got invasive and non-invasive, and then you've got native and exotic. Native species are originally from somewhere. Exotic species aren't. Invasive species are invasive and non-invasive species aren't. Every single species is going to fit somewhere on the spectrum between native and exotic and invasive or non-invasive. So being entirely exotic does not mean that a species is invasive. And a native species doesn't necessarily mean that it's non-invasive. For example, Apple trees are exotic, but at least in this part of the world, around Chicagoland, they're not a problem. They don't become invasive or anything. Gray dogwood is often referred to in restoration ecology as invasive, but it is a native Illinois species that has evolved here for millions of years. Evolved in this place, but not under these conditions. That being said, let's explain what it means to displace a species from the context in which it originally evolved. And 
how that negatively impacts an ecosystem. So, of course, ecosystems and all of the living things within them are constantly responding to each other all the time for millions and millions of years. And over time, this means that one native species evolution is going to be tied to another native species evolution. In fact, all of the native species is evolution. Ever heard of an evolutionary arms race? That's what this is, but it's also like an evolutionary three-legged race and an evolutionary relay race. Because ecosystems aren't just competitive, they're also very collaborative. But yeah, all of these species have had adaptations to which other species that evolved nearby had to respond. And over time, they've gotten pretty good at doing it. Usually, when you take one species out of the place in which it evolved and plop it down somewhere totally different, it just dies. Imagine, like, you're racing horses and you plop a snail down on the track. That snail's gonna die. However, if that new species is equipped with an evolutionary adaptation that will not only benefit it in the new ecosystem, but which the species in the new ecosystem have not themselves evolved? Well, imagine if you're racing chariots and then the space shuttle appears and all the horses and all the drivers are just incinerated. It's like that, except there's no winners. You just keep going around and around the track because evolution doesn't just end. Alternatively, you can have a bunch of species that are generally living in the same conditions, the same soil, the same weather and such, but there is some kind of disturbance that some species are adapted to survive and other ones can only survive if they're in just the right place or they have just the right response. This disturbance could be a wildfire or some insect that eats a plant like crazy or whatever. So that disadvantaged species has evolved, perhaps, to reproduce very, very rapidly to make up for all of the individuals that are killed off by this disturbance. So what might happen if you remove that disturbance? Well, imagine you're racing chariots, and then one of the chariot drivers and their horse just starts spewing out babies. It's just babies everywhere. It's slick and slimy on the track. Stinks to high hell. You got horses slipping on babies. But that one guy, he's just zooming. <clears throat> if that wasn't vivid enough for you, let's try to illustrate a more realistic detail of this picture, shall we? One that we can go out and see ourselves, even, even if we'll never get to see a chariot, horse, snail, space shuttle race with fully automatic babies. Here in Cook County, Illinois, public enemy number one is probably Eurasian buckthorn. This stuff deserves a video all its own and it will get one. But this is a small tree or bush that would not have been able to grow in the Chicagoland area if it was still actively managed using fire by the people who lived there. Also another video. In Europe, buckthorn was used to plant hedges just about everywhere and also used for readily available small flexible pieces of wood like for fencing or tools and things like that. This is because when you cut a stem of buckthorn it just grows nine more and it can grow in the densest shade. It can grow packed together like sardines and it can grow in wet conditions, dry conditions, compacted soil, loose soil, just about anywhere, as long as there isn't too much fire. <laughs> you see, plants around here, they like lots of sun, even in the woods. They like fire, and they like deep, layer cake-like soil that isn't mixed together and just absorbs water like a sponge. But buckthorn, buckthorn is special. Buckthorn just can't have other plants with other ideas intervening in its space. So it just kills all the other plants in the areas in which it grows and turns that soil into soil that's good for buckthorn, but not all the other plants. 
Basically, as long as that pesky fire isn't a thing anymore, buckthorn just uses its very roots and berries and leaves to turn an ecosystem into the kind of ecosystem that it likes. Eventually, it kills entire forests and woodlands and grasslands, turning them into impenetrable, thorny, polluted, eroding mosquito colonies. Did I mention that buckthorn has become the uh, most common tree in Cook County? Oh yeah, this is a problem. And as such, buckthorn is a perfect example of how many scientists believe invasive species are the number one cause of species extinctions worldwide. Let that sink in. Some plants that we inadvertently or purposely brought to a place where they should never have been is the biggest contributor to the mass extinction which our planet is undergoing. And of course, that is partially because invasive species contribute so much to Habitat loss, which you might have also heard is the number one leading cause of extinction of species worldwide. Just kind of depends on who you ask and how you define it. Just like invasive species. So, buckthorn, that is an invasive species, no doubt. But what about, say, coyotes? In Cook County, still, I mean, coyotes are not from around here. It was only as wolves and such were removed as well as a lot of the thick forests to which coyotes weren't very well adapted, that coyotes moved in from the Great Plains and the Rockies and such. They've only been here for about as long as people of English descent. And folks sure are scared of them. Sometimes they kill a dog. And that's about it. Like, literally. Your dog is more dangerous than the coyote. You're more dangerous than the coyote. The coyote's probably scared of you. The coyote's scared of your kids, and if your dog is bigger than this, it's probably scared of your dog, too. Just another video. Another video. I don't, I don't mean to put anyone on the spot here. If you, if you fear coyotes, I get it. But why don't we consider coyotes invasive? Well, because they're good for the ecosystem. You see, as wolves were getting run out, and as humans were changing a lot of the forests into more open savannas and farmlands and cities, wolves had to integrate with the coyotes, if you know what I mean, in order to survive. And thus they were able to fulfill this new niche that was created in the ecosystem, and they do it rather well. They help to balance out over-disturbed ecosystems and can thrive as a natural, native, or naturalized apex predator in everything from pristine woodlands to buckthorn wastelands to Navy Pier in the city. And that right there is just where things start to get really confusing. So if you want to stop here and you've got everything that you were looking for, that's perfect. But if you would like to take a deeper dive, a more critical lens towards the concept of invasive species with me, then join me next time. And don't forget to follow and, you know, Subscribe, notification bell, all the all the stuff. Do all the things so you can see when that part comes out. And remember, we all live in an ecosystem.